First things first, you're gonna hit this little gear button up here. And then we're gonna check out general. So general, auto overcome obstacles while sprinting on. Skill casting mode, cast on release. Damage numbers stacked. Squad info notifications, you want this on in case you, you know, it's mostly for like pings for your teammates, stuff like that. You wanna keep that on. Enable others to reserve. I have this off as well, just because it's kind of annoying to have a pop-up in game. Streamer mode, I have off. Highlights record, I have that off. It takes a video of your game and you could access the information in it. For seven days, each replay uses around five megabytes. I have this off because I feel like the game might lag a bit. It, it even says here that this feature might lead to device lag and uh, I have a lower end PC so it kind of does. So I turn that off. Enemy outline border I have on. Enhance outline I have on. Outline effect I have extra outline. Mini map rotation I have off. Button hints. Display all. Manual shooting patterns. I have for press for continuous shooting. I don't recommend fire a single shot with a quick tap. I don't know why you'd have that on. I prefer press for continuous shooting but to each their own. Aiming down sides field of view. I have this on affected because I don't want a different FOV. You you could put it on independent and you could you could change your FOV for when you're aiming down sights. I prefer to have it just the way that the game intended, so I'm gonna keep it as affected. And that's it for general. For graphics, I have full screen on. This gives you the best performance, obviously. Monitor, obviously I only have one monitor on right now because my GPU is strapped. Normally I have two, but monitor one. For graphics quality, I have it on balanced or smooth just for the FPS. But if you wanted the good, if you wanted the good pictures, the good graphics, the good quality, minimum, put it on HD. That way you get the good animations, you get a nice little picture. Everything just looks a lot better on HD. I'd recommend HD or HDR if your device can handle it. If not, I would recommend putting your frame rate at very high first because very high is 240, high is 144, medium is 120, and low is 60. So you want to prioritize your frame rate first and then go on your graphics quality try hd if your if your computer's lagging like like mine does sometimes you know you're getting some frame drops take it down to balanced if you're still having issues take it down to smooth if you're still having issues i recommend taking your frame rate down to high i would always prioritize frame rate just because it's the only thing that's really going to give you an advantage in game the graphics quality it's not going to give you an advantage in game for brightness i have it at 50 percent some people like to go up higher my eyes you know they are what they are i i leave it at default defaults 50 percent anti-aliasing in matches i leave it on msaa it just gives it a little bit of a smooth you know not as artifacty it's it's not too much of a difference i've actually noticed slightly higher frames with this setting on and you can test for yourself and let me know but for me for some reason i get higher frames with this on i don't know why try it out for yourself if it if it lags your device feel free to turn it off it's not going to give you any extra performance when it comes to you know 1v1 it's not going to help you out really uh it, it's just for cosmetics all these settings uh down here are going to be cosmetic anti-aliasing outside of matches this is a new setting i'm going to turn this on because i like the pre-lobby to look nice i don't need full performance while i'm in the lobby so it's not that big of a deal if i'm not inside of a match i don't need that full performance so i'll leave that on it looks cute anisotropic filtering this is kind of like uh turning the contrast up on your screen you know, some people like it at 16 times. My computer can't really run that. I prefer just to keep it, you know, normal. So I keep it at one times. But if you want a little more color, a little more splash of color, you know, a bit more contrast. If you're having some issues with color, seeing color, stuff like that, you, know, you can turn this up. It makes it look it makes it look cute, a little more cartoony. Sun shadow detail, this this can make or break the game. Sun shadow detail, if you have this on high, it makes the game look completely different. It looks so good. I tried it, my PC was ready to take off like a jet turbine. I couldn't run it, but if you have a nice PC, this can make Farlight 84 look freaking beautiful. And I wish I could show you guys, but the sun shadow really adds an, a whole nother level of graphics. For decal quality, I have that on high. It's not that big of a deal. For VSync, I have off just to get higher frames. You can turn VSync on, it, it'll basically just match the frames of the game to the hertz of your monitor so if you're running at 120 hertz it'll lock your gameplay at 120 frames even if you have your high frame rate on and you're still getting low frames it's probably because you have this setting turned on for gamma i have this on default and for fov i have it on 85 now you could set it to 90. It goes up as high as 90, but in third person, that 90 FOV kind of gives it a bit of a fisheye effect and it makes me it makes me a little motion sick. So I like to have that at 85. Now keep this in mind that if you don't want to run 85 FOV, then my keyboard and mouse settings may be slightly different than yours. Just keep that in mind. It will affect your sensitivity. If you change your FOV, you have to mess with your sensitivity a little bit. Otherwise, you're going to struggle for a few games until you're getting used to stuff again. On to keyboard and mouse. Keyboard and mouse is what's changed a lot this update. So 
for keyboard and mouse, the thing about this is that for a while they had the PC settings ported over from mobile settings and they have changed that this season to what's more similar to how a PC gaming experience would be. But basically the way that you aim in this game has, has changed and it will not feel the same and everybody's settings have been reset. Your aiming mode, you're going to have that on hold. I, I prefer hold. That's when you hold your right mouse button down. And then when you let go, it stops aiming. If you have it on switch, then you click it. It'll stay locked down until you click it again. That's the difference between hold and switch. For sprinting mode, I have it on auto. That's just if you hit the W key, you run automatically. This, I have this on auto run only because having it on hold is kind of awkward. And then having it on switch, this often results in me getting dead slides, which is basically when you try a slide, but you just end up standing there crouching like an idiot. This kind of helps prevent that little bit of, sometimes I mess up and maybe I don't hit shift fast enough. But if you have auto sprint on, you're pretty much always gonna hit those buttery smooth slides. For medical roulette operation mode, I have pressed to use. For sticker roulette operation mode, I have pressed to use for obvious reasons, because if you have something on press to use and not release to use, the second you push the button, it'll pull up. If you have release to use, you have to push the button and pull it off for it to work. So that's an extra little millisecond I don't need because I'll be dead. All right, this game ain't messing around. I'm not trying to waste milliseconds on this, that, and the other, so I'm keeping those on press to use. It is recommended to use a unique key for consumables. I do have a unique key for consumables on. I'm not really sure what this what this is doing here. Is this just a reminder? I'm not sure, but I do have that on. I'll show you my custom bind keys. This is this is basically by my custom key binds. I'll scroll through them quickly. I just binded bandage. I don't really use the bandage, but we're gonna go ahead and bind that. Um, I'll, I'll scroll through them real slowly here. This is what I have. Um, I don't have an item wheel binded. It's not that big of a deal because I have each item binded to a separate key. I have my, my shield recharger small on a five. I had the big on a six. I have the med kit on the four and I have the bandage on caps lock because caps lock wasn't, wasn't doing anything before. I have my recommended consumables. I used to pick up weapon with F, but I've changed that to recommended consumables. And that was all I had to change this season. There was just, it was just the one new, it was just the bandage. And then for some reason it unbinded a couple of my things. So I had to redo them. Okay. So this is what has changed. Okay. So take a look, take a screenshot, do whatever you need to do. If you skip to this part, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Subscribe if it really helped and uh, leave a like so other people can find the video. Leave your comments down below if, if you have any variations of it where you think it'd be a lot better. But for me, this is what I found has worked for the most part. Okay, so like I said, this is the part that's changed. Fix mouse cursor within game window. I have that on. Mouse sensitivity, I have at 3.5. It used to be a four. Uh, I had to turn down at 3.5 just because everything felt different. So for me, the, the old four is my new 3.5. Keep in mind, I'm using Using a wired mouse this is a razor mouse and i have it running at 800 dpi so if you have 1600 dpi you take all these settings and have them the only thing is you can't really have these settings because some of them don't go below zero the, the lowest setting you put it at is 0 0.2 so if i have something set at a 0 0.28 you can't put it at a 0 0.14 because it doesn't exist and this is also another issue that i would hopefully this could get resolved in the future because there are settings that i put below a 0.2 so this could be an issue uh, for people that struggle with long range aiming at a consistent level. For me, I need a lower, a really low four times and eight times sensitivity, but this is about the best we can get. Uh, ADS mouse sensitivity boost. I have this on low because this kind of, this kind of hurts your, your consistency with your aiming. We don't want sensitivity boost. We don't want, I have it at a 0.2. For sensitivity for each zoom level, I have this on. If you have it off, then your one time zoom, two times, four times, and eight times are all going to be the same sensitivity, which is something that some people are used to in gaming. Unfortunately for me, I prefer having a slower sensitivity when you're trying to aim with an eight times or four times because they're standing farther away. It's a lot harder to track those micro movements when they're very far away because they're very, very, very small, minute movements compared to somebody that's extremely close to you when you're fighting a 1v1 and you whip out the one times or you whip out, you know, just the, yeah, just the one times, not the red dot. This is something that's pretty important. So basically what I have is I have the fastest, the fastest sensitivity on the one times, and then it's kind of gradually going down from there, which is kind of how it, it kind of helps in certain situations situations. The only thing that I, the only thing that would really benefit from you having the same sensitivity on each scope is that you would have very consistent aim across the board. But to be honest, you miss a lot more shots. If you have the sensitivities all the same, you're, you're also tuned in 
So no matter what you pick up, it's gonna be the same sensitivity. And some people like that. And, and for me, I prefer to have it on each. That's how I've always done it. That's how I learned on this game specifically. This is how I'm gonna continue playing this game. Sensitivity boost, I have this down in the lowest, which is a 0.2. The 0.2 is the lowest you can get for my one times. I'll, I'll just read them out to you guys. My one times, I have a 0.36. My two times, I have a 0.3. Four times, I have a 0.28. And then eight times, I have a 0.25. So the lowest you can go, like I said, is a 0.2. If you wanted to go below this, you really can't do it. So if you have a higher DPI mouse, it's going to be difficult to get your specific scope sensitivities as low as you want. If you want to run these settings on 1600 DPI, it's not really possible. You're going to have to run at 800 DPI. Some people don't like using that. Like I said, for 400, if you, a lot of people run 400 DPI, you just take all these settings and you would double them, all of them. But this is what I've had. This is what I've been practicing on all night. And this is what's worked for me for the best. Invert mouse. I don't know why you'd have that on. I don't know who does that. And then vehicle mouse sensitivity. Again, I don't... This is basically the menu of what the old sensitivities used to be like. I don't really mess with these. Honestly, if you're shooting from a car, you know, most of the weapons have been nerfed so much on the vehicles that it's not really too too much but these default settings that come in uh don't work too bad controller i'm gonna have a separate video for controller so for sound i have this on high some people have it on ultra i believe as you turn it up you get to hear things from slightly farther away so if you want the ultimate advantage you want to hear things from super far away it might be kind of confusing background music of course i have off right now just because we're recording but normally I leave this on this is my sound i have them all about a half because you turn them up i don't know it gets crazy but um I do have my sound effects slightly higher than my background music, my capsular voices, just because I want to be able to hear those footsteps, hear those gunshots over everything else. My mic volume I have about here, chat volume's the same. My mic channel I usually have off. My audio channel I also usually have off unless I'm playing with people I know. And then for voice chat method, I usually just have open mic because I'm already struggle trying to hit whatever buttons I need to hit while in game. So I normally just have open mic open and people just kind of deal with it. And uh, you know, that's why I only play with friends and not strangers because strangers would probably be annoyed by an open mic and then for custom i have the squad mates perspective projection color i don't know why this always changes i think this dark blue or this purple is probably the easiest to see i prefer the dark blue for the battlefield sound visualization this is basically like if somebody's shooting if there's a car driving by like like you see here a weapon firing character movement parachuting vehicles vehicles firing it'll give you a little visual indicator on your screen and you could change it so that it's stretched out that way it'll look like this not sure why you'd want to do this you could take the opacity down to like 50 percent. that way it doesn't it's not super crazy on your screen which is what i have it as i have it on tile close just means you you have it off you're a mad lad if you have this off and then this is another setting that they've added this season so they have an ammo bar customization they you could turn it off if you want to um i like it I, I prefer to have it on screen i put it on always visible you could turn it on hip fire only i have it on always visible and i have my horizontal set offset at 28 my vertical at 20 it looks about the best well that's basically it for the settings if you enjoyed if these settings work for you leave a like if you have any suggestions notes down below uh feel free to leave a comment if you're just here for the pc settings then i'll see you guys next season thanks for watching bye bye